Next question is from Rebsquesto Fitness. Should you train and eat differently depending on body shape, such as mesomorph, ectomorph, endomorph, or is that a myth? Have you guys been tagged on the the, the little things that have been going around right now with the fasting? Is that and the coming body? back? Well, yeah, just I think that's where this question is coming from. I was tagged at least 15 or 20 times on uh, these these people that are doing posts right now that are, you know, uh, promoting intermittent fasting and that the the types of windows, you know, intermittent fasting windows based off of your body type. Really? Yeah. Yes. And and it, Pure I know that this question isn't exact directly uh, connected to this, but it's very it's related to this. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's all in all, it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it is. So um, I had to look this up because I forgot. So uh, somatotypes are what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Mesomorph, ectomorph endomorph so a ectomorph the it, it describes the classic skinny Tall, skinny person yeah like the skinny hard gainer right so uh skinny bones narrow shoulders does, doesn't gain weight very uh, very easily at all either muscle or body fat typically left to their own devices without training or whatever not very physically strong right a mesomorph is your natural bodybuilder your natural athlete builds muscle very easily Stays relatively lean easily, naturally strong. And then your endomorph is someone who gains weight very easily, thicker boned. Um, they gain more body fat. They also gain more muscle. They tend to be bigger uh, people. Fixed. Now, the, the, this, was, this is a, a form of uh, taxonomy. So this is like what they would do when they describe like animal shapes and stuff like that. And it was mm -hmm. developed in the 1940s by a psychologist, William Herbert Sheldon. He's the guy that came up with this. Now, can you classify people in these categories? Sure. There are people that fit into these categories, but most people don't fit neatly into ectomorph, mesomorph, or, or endomorph. Most people are a combination mm -hmm. of all of these things. Like, I, I lean much more towards ectomorph, right? I tend to have more of that body type, that hard gainer body type. I wouldn't consider myself a pure 100% ectomorph. I probably yeah. ectomorph with some mesomorphic, you know, qualities. Yeah, I'm, I'm like meso endo. Yeah, so like, and so this has been discarded in, in for for a little while now. But but here's the here's the answer to your question. Forget your your body type in in terms of categorizing like this. Go off of your own individual body. So should you train and eat differently depending on your body? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Your training should match your body. Your diet should match your body not somebody else's because your individual body is going to respond and react differently. Yeah, I think, th I mean, and again, this is marketing. This is this is a way that they can kind of uh, reduce options for people out there because there's so many variables that, that dictate, you know, what you should be eating, you know, how you should be training your body. And this is why we're always saying depends, you know, individual-wise. But, you know, marketing, they don't want to deal with, uh, you know, all those different variables. They just want to like corral like certain types to speak to them uh, more generally. And so this is definitely like the general version of like all the different body types mm -hmm. we see. Well, and to your point about marketing, it's it's our fault as consumers because we want to be put in a box. We yes. want to identify with a group. Just tell me what to do. Right. And when you do something like this and you say like, oh, this per this type of body type has a hard time putting muscle on and they can't. They, and it's like, that's me. Sure. That's totally me. And so then I and then so the the marketers know this and then they know, oh, now if we we can get them to identify with this group. Now we can sell them on the idea that the reason why they weren't seeing results is because they weren't doing what's specific for them. And, you know, that it's it's a bunch of hogwash. It's not true at, at all. And in fact, why this got debunked is because where this this what this doesn't share or talk about is metabolism. And the metabolism is, even though it, when you may be uh, have a genetic, uh, you know, a predisposition to a faster or slower metabolism, it's a free flowing thing that you can change, good or bad, right? You can speed it up or slow it down depending on your behaviors and habits, not only what you do physically, but also how you eat. So there's always an exception to the rule for each one of these things. You can be in one of those categories, but struggling to gain muscle or, or burn body fat that's not supposedly in that category because of where your metabolism currently is. Yeah. Now, I will say this. There definitely are people that seem to fit perfectly in each of these categories. Like if I describe an ectomorph yeah. uh, who's your classic hard gainer, doesn't gain weight very easily, seems to have a roaring metabolism. They eat as much as everybody else, and yet they're super skinny while everybody else is obese, um, and it's hard for them to build muscle. I can definitely speak to that person. I can talk to that person, and if you fit neatly in that category, and that literally is you, 
then there are some things you may want to consider. Like, let's say you're an ectomorph and you do fit in that category. Most people don't, but let's say you do. Then you're probably going to have to consume something like 22 calories for every pound of body weight. Now, I would never give that number to somebody who's not fit, who doesn't fit neatly in that category. But someone who does, then that's, a, that's the amount of calories you probably need to eat. And I've read studies on this. So that would mean a 150 pound classic ectomorph, let's say that actually existed, that person would need to consume about 3,300 calories just to gain weight. Now, if you're a 150 pound average person, um, 3,300 calories might make you just gain a ton of body fat. So there are people that seem to fit in that, but it's in terms of categorizing people in these neat three categories, I mean, it's almost never the case.